all, I want to get to back here to hear from the prosecutor, from the defense, from community members. There is a lot of reaction we will have for you coming shortly. So back to you guys. Yes. 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 Come here. Come back to me. Come back to me. Oh my God! Oh my God, Justin. Come back to me. Cody. Oh, he answered our prayers. This is Nancy Strickland. He answered our prayers. Now, please bring him. This is a community member I want to hear from oh right now. Okay, God. take a listen, guys. Now. I'm begging Corey Bigsby, please tell us where Cody's, Cody's at. Oh my God. I'm, I'm crying. These are happy tears, y'all. They're happy tears. I see you have your phone. Quit bringing your phone. Cody. Cody. He got me. He got us all. His face, when we seen his face, we fell in love with him. And he became seven by seven, seven by seven's child. That's what Cody Bigsby did. We got Justin. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. where's Cody? Right. <laughs> Y'all been out here for a long time looking for baby Oh, Cody. my God. Nice. I feel good. Nancy, yeah, what, are, what are your general emotions Justin right now? Cody. You were here every day of this trial. Uh, what does it feel like to hear the guilty verdict? Oh, my God. I wanted to get up and scream. Uh, but I couldn't. I couldn't. I wanted to get up and scream. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, because we we wanted this for 26 months, and we finally got it. Well, what was the turning moment in the case? You heard all the testimony. What was the strongest? <laughs> for me, is when the man got up and said he seen Cody in the grocery store. Nancy, and he, with the money you collected, would you be buying a bench now? And he, Cody? Yes. Mom gives me permission, yes. So, um, oh, God. The man in the grocery store. Yes, when the man in the grocery store said he's seen Cody that weekend, two days before Corey reported him missing. And it was it was DJ. It was not even Cody. It was DJ, and the man said, this is him. What's next for Thank the you, Nancy. Where is Cody movement? Searching. Guys, you can, I don't know if you're back to me now or not, but you can hear the emotion. You can hear how this case has captivated, as I said, captivated Hampton Roads. I was there in January of 2022. I was there. I saw the crime scene tape. I saw them going in and out of Corey Bigsby's apartment. This has something that has touched us all. And you mentioned, I think the thing I didn't get to say the first time was those alleged confession letters, those statements that Corey made in jail, that he passed to a Hampton Regional Jail officer, that he wrote in a composition book. And I think we have some more folks coming out right now. Hang on, stay with us.
say nothing to none of us. Don't say nothing to Say it to her. Don't put nothing in my face. That. We are we are following Corey's a relative of Corey's right now. We are not going to cross the street and follow her, but you can hear behind me. You can see the picture there. You can see you can see what's happening here is that these community members are asking, where is the body of Cody Bigsby? And I will say when Corey Bigsby's relative walked away, she did. Hey, uh, let's get back here to Anton Bell. This is, I'm sorry, correction, Curtis Brown. Mr. Brown, do you have anything you would like to comment? I don't have any, I don't have any comments, but I tell you this. Uh, they got what they wanted, so I'm hoping that they're happy and hoping that you all are happy. Okay? You understand? I'm hoping that they're happy. You all, you all presented the case. You all presented the case the way that y'all wanted, as if he was guilty already and everything, so y'all should be satisfied. Sir, are you going to appeal? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it. Mr. Brown, do you feel as though you had a fair chance with this case? No. Uh, you, were, you, were, you, were, you were in there. You were in there. You were in the court, okay? Yes. I called Mr. Bill. I said that everybody, you know, you're striking all these black people. You black, Nobody I said I'm black. To do it. We're talking about a child. We're talking about exactly. a trio. Quit throwing race We're cars. talking about Mr. Brown, we hear from you. We hear from everyone. That yeah. is. What if that was your grandchild? While you were doing your closing argument, do you still believe he's alive? I don't look. I don't want now to. Don't know. Can we hear him, please? Can we hear him? We need to hear him. I don't want to. I don't want to say something that you know uh, I might have to regret one day. So I think it's best that I go to lunch like we're headed. Okay. What are the next steps in appeals court? Do you all plan to go there and argue your case? Okay. And if you guys can hear me right now. The prosecution actually snuck out. They are crossing the street right now. That is Anton Bell walking away with his team. And again, today, Anton Bell and the prosecution are celebrating a victory as the jury did come back and find Corey Bigsby guilty on both second degree murder and concealing a body. But it does not appear that we are going to hear from Mr. Bell today. It is an unbelievable feeling, I will say, being in the courtroom, hearing that verdict, hearing the community members, hearing Nancy Strickland, hearing everyone that you just saw, that, that, it, that we now know, we at least know that Corey is guilty. And that reverberates across Hampton Roads. We've covered search parties for little Cody for two years. We have covered every pretrial motion. We have covered every aspect of this case for 26 months. And we're doing that because Hampton Roads wants to know. They want to know the outcome of this case, and now we have the outcome of this case. And that is just something that I think the community needed.
I found that interesting as well. I thought for sure uh, he would say one way or the other that he was either appealing or not, but he glossed over that question pretty quickly. And I will say, looking back on my notes here, um, in Curtis Brown's defense, his closing, he kept saying serious charges, serious evidence, and he kept saying we don't have it. And he kept coming back to circumstantial evidence. But I think what we're seeing here today is that the case that the prosecution presented was strong enough to get this conviction. So we had the alleged confession letters, we had the statements, we had the testimony from his brother, his older brother, who is now seven, who was only five at the time. We had a lot going on here today and the jury came back with that decision. And I will say, you know, you mentioned, well, Mr. Brown mentioned the bias of the media and we have covered every aspect of this from the beginning. And that's all I'll comment on that. Can I bring in Angela Bohan? She has been here. Can I bring in Angela? She has been here seven days. We're going to move over. Yep, we're going to move over. I just wanted to add in the sentencing information just that we one just second. heard. Okay, so Angela has the sentencing information. I'm going to hold over the mic for her here. Thank you. Um, yes, we just heard the sentencing information. They finally settled on the date of June 18th. If you recall, that's kind of ironic in this case. June 18th is when police have told us they believe that uh, the father killed Cody. So that would be three years mm -hmm. from 21 until the sentencing date. So that is an ironic date, I think. They were trying to figure out a date that would just work for them, and they settled on June 18th at 11 o'clock. After that, they did try to revoke his bond, and um, of course, uh, Amina Matheny Willard tried to say he, he's been free and he's made all his court dates, so he should still be free for now, but the judge was not having that, and they, they handcuffed him there in the courtroom and, and took him out. And um, you know, I talked with some of the ladies that have been here throughout and searching for Cody, and they said for one of the ladies I talked to has said for her, it was the letters. It was the letters and the son's testimony. She said, you know, I don't feel like kids would lie about something like that. Angela, if you don't mind if I take this over, how are you feeling right now? This is day seven. It's just uh, myself, uh, just a little bit tired after hearing all this, you know, emotionally draining, I think. And I can only imagine what the attorneys and those who are fully involved family can only imagine, you know, and, and I see these people who have no relation to Cody and they've been here spending their time. It's just, it's amazing to watch this process. It's been a learning process also for me and um, quite emotional actually during the closing when Bell said about Cody's eyes being open apparently from what the brother described saying that was the last thing he saw was his father beating him. I mean, that brought tears to my eyes as well as the testimony from the brother. So it's been a long week and a half. Absolutely. I do want to mention a couple quotes we had from closing that I think uh, made an impact in this case. And one was from Anton Bell. And he said, quote, this case is about a predator who preyed upon a three-year-old. This is not about a protective, caring parent. And I watched the jury as he said that, and they were listening. Curtis Brown also had a quote that I, I do want to put out there, and he said, you have a case based on sympathy, not on evidence. And again, he kept coming back to circumstantial evidence, but today the jury decided that the prosecution's case against Corey Bigsby in killing his four-year-old son Cody, that it was a strong enough case. And again, I know we've talked about, about it, but he was found guilty of second-degree murder in concealing a body. And as Angela said, he was immediately put into handcuffs. He has been out on bond throughout this process. He was immediately taken into custody. And as Angela said, we will know sentencing on June 18th. And as she mentioned, that is ironic because that is when the prosecution says that they think Cody was killed was June 18th, 2021. So we are now looking at three years to the day that Corey Bigsby may find out just how many years 
he could be behind bars on both of these charges.